Classroom of the Elite is one of the most interesting high school animes I've seen in a long time. And thank goodness, after a few years, we have been blessed with another season. Let me get this straight though. This is not the most well-refined show out there. It's a little bit rough around the edges to be honest. There's quite a few flaws when it comes to the pacing, characterization, and a few key elements. And those imperfections were clearly reflected on its ratings. But we'll get to that later. What I noticed about this show, however, is that when it gets good, oh, it gets really good. And most of it has to do with its main character. Enter my man's Ayano Koji Kiyotaka. At first glance, you would think that he's a boring, mediocre, and underwhelming character, navigating his way in his first year in one of Japan's most elite educational institutions, wherein class groups are encouraged to excel, scheme, connive, and outsmart one another during school exams, tournaments, and events which would determine if they would receive penalties or earn points. They can use their points to buy necessities and strategical advantages to get to the top spot wherein they can access more of the prestige, resources, and opportunities the society had to offer. And Okoji was placed in class D, the bottom rung of the school higher. Many of his classmates often overlook and disregard him, for who was he, really? But a seemingly average boy with average looks, average grades, average abilities, average everything. And that's exactly what he wants everyone to think. Actually, this man is a beast. He's definitely one of the smartest and most cunning students in the whole school. On his entrance exam, he got a consistent score of 50 on all his subjects, and the insane thing about it is that it was all planned, baby. He was big brain enough to know the correct answer to every question, and confident enough to pick the wrong choice on 50% of the questions to straight up get an average score of 50, just to stay on the down low. He looks weak, low energy and timid, but when push comes to shove, this man can move like Ultra Instinct Shaggy on a good day. Unlike most animes wherein we would probably know almost 90% about the main character, their likes, backstory, goals, and abilities in the first few episodes, Classroom of the Elite only gives us bits and pieces of information per episode. And that makes Ayano Koji seem mysterious and ominous. We become invested to know more of him as he reveals more of his capabilities and inner thoughts as the story progresses. What I also like about this man is that he's so chill that if World War 3 starts tomorrow, he'd probably just stare blankly in front of him like what he always does and have an uncaring inner monologue probably saying, hmm. I guess school's cancelled this week. This man cannot be tilted. He can remain calm, unreactive, and unemotional even during dire situations. Which is kind of a cheat code, if you think about it. He never panics, that is why he is able to analyze the situation and outsmart and manipulate the people around him when they believe they already had him cornered. It's classic art of war, and all warfare is based on deception. Ayano Koji pretends to be weak when he's strong and seem unprepared when in fact he's already three steps ahead of the competition. When able to attack, he appears unable. With his weak presence, his silently observes and learns everything about his classmates and enemies. Their strengths, their weaknesses, what makes them tick, and he patiently crafts plans and backup plans in case someone interferes with him. He lays up baits to entice his enemies, covers his plan in darkness, and in the midst of the chaos, he falls like a thunderbolt, dealing the decisive blow, crushing his opponents. And the impressive part is that no one, aside from Horikita and the other big brain players in the show, knows that he's behind everything. Underneath his relaxed and stoic exterior, there is a monster that lies in wait, waiting for the appropriate time to strike. There's this sense of Machiavellianism within him, a drive to do whatever it takes in order to accomplish his personal objectives, even if doing so may get his hands dirty. And this was revealed in the finale of season 1. If you've already finished that, you would exactly get how goated that final scene was when Ayano Koji finally revealed to the audience who he truly is. If you haven't seen it yet though, I recommend you to check the show out for you to appreciate the philosophical, societal, and psychological themes it is trying to convey. And the pay of scenes are so hyped, you wouldn't help but root for the main characters. Like what I said in the intro, I think that the first season of this show could have been done better, and there are some aspects of it that I find lacking. A few scenes didn't hit as hard as they could have, and the fan service was kind of in your face and unnecessary. Personally, I wouldn't mind getting a little salt and pepper here and there, as it retains audience interest and attention, if you know what I'm saying. But some of the fan service scenes of the show felt out of place and kind of affected the characterization of some of the more compelling characters. I also think that the screenwriters and directors of the show had some difficulties adapting the story from the original light novel into its anime form. I wouldn't know for certain though because I haven't checked the light novel yet, but I will once I get more free time. Overall though, I really enjoyed watching Classroom of the Elite so much that I finished the whole season in one sitting. Part of it is because I went into watching this anime without any high expectations of it. And another is because Ayano Koji embodies some of the key concepts of Machiavellianism, Stoicism, and the art of war. Stuff that I found interesting enough to make videos out of. Links in the description. This anime also deals with deep and profound questions about society, equality, meritocracy, the worth of a human being, and how far a person will go in order to pursue his or her personal interest. If you're into psychological and strategical shows such as Death Note, Squid Game, 
Code Geass, Alice in Borderland, or even Hunger Games, this anime could be right up your alley. And the main character, aside from being really OP, is very interesting, mysterious, and somewhat terrifying. I'm invested to know what he will do next. What really happened to him in the past? Will he end up with Karuizawa or Horikita? And what kind of goated play will this man pull off next in the current second season? Objectively, I would have given the show a 7.5 out of 10. But since I'm really fascinated with the main character, and that made me kinda biased, I'll be rounding the rating for this show up to an 8. If you're a light novel reader, please convince me to check out the original material soon, cause I heard it was pretty great. I also want to know what you guys think about this show in general. Well, that's it guys. Thanks for watching. Till next time.